Hey everyone, it's Anya here from the blog OurGableHome.com and in this video I want to share with you how we built our raised garden beds from rocks. Um, the first consideration was that, I mean, everybody loves raised garden beds and often they're made from wood or metal. And we thought that that wouldn't work so well with the existing hardscape in our garden of our 1910 home. And we have a lot of low rock walls. And we thought that building something with the kind of native bluestone in our area would actually look much better than wood or metal. Obviously the reasons to build raised garden beds are really easy. They are a little bit easier to reach either kneeling or bending over because they're higher off the ground. It's easier to add soil to them or amend the soil later and it's easier to keep weeds out. Now there are some drawbacks. Um, they tend to dry out a little bit faster, so you may have to water them a little bit more in the summer. And depending on what kind of material to use or how many beds you build, they could be kind of costly. So we decided for the rock walls, the stone garden beds, and we actually happen to have a pile of flagstone and rocks that our neighbor had given us. And how can you say no to something that's free? So the first thing I did was I located the spot where I wanted to build the beds. Um, as you can see, this is the most sunny spot in our urban homestead garden. And I measured how wide and how long I wanted the beds to be. So four feet is kind of the standard because it's easy to reach the beds from both sides. And nine feet long was just working best for our space. Then I simply put four stakes in the ground at each corner for both beds and tied string around it so I had the outline of the garden beds. And then we had to move all the rocks and uh, thicker flagstone from the pile where we had it so we just simply Put them in the wheelbarrows and wheel them over so it is physically a little bit harder to lift all the rocks but with some gloves and um, it didn't really take us that long um, it was just a few hours to arrange the rocks and depending on what you have because they're not all even in size and shape it's a little bit like tetris so you start with flatter bigger ones on the bottom you may have um, big ones as we did for the corners And then you just build up from there. And basically what we did was we built, and if it didn't work, if they toppled over, we rebuilt the section and we moved them around. It's actually quite fun. I really enjoyed the process. And once we had done that, we put down cardboard to keep the weeds down because this was over, uh, at some point it was some sort of lawn. <laughs> And we had a lot of exalis and grass there, so we put cardboard down to keep the weeds down, which is another benefit of your raised garden beds. <clears throat> and then we got topsoil. My husband went and got three cubic yards of a veggie blend garden topsoil from a local place and got it in this dump truck. And again, that was another action with a lot of buckets and shovels and wheelbarrows putting all the topsoil in the garden beds. And what ended up happening was that we decided that the garden beds weren't deep enough and we had more topsoil. So we added more rock to the walls to make the beds deeper. And then we filled in more topsoil. Also because our area here wasn't quite level and with these uneven natural rocks and stones, you can't really tell if the garden beds are level. So we brought out a level and as we went and filled the garden beds with the soil, 
we kept on leveling the soil because when you water, you don't want the water to run off to one side. Once the plants are in, it's not going to matter that much, but in this, especially in the beginning, you really want um, even flat soil. And so we leveled and made it as level as we could. And I'm super excited because I already have a bunch of seeds starting indoors, but there are some seeds that do well with direct sowing and I have already put them in the ground, such as carrots and radishes and strawberries. And what else do I have? I have some rhubarb and I have some sorrel and I have some New Zealand spinach. So I'm super excited to see these coming up and I encourage you to check back as I tell you how this is all working out if, and we made any mistakes, any failures. Um, I'm always happy to share my successes, but be honest about it and um, follow along the journey. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here on my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I upload new content every week. Thank you so much for watching and see you here next time.